live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Inforum 2016, brought to you by Infor. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Good morning everybody, welcome to the Javits Center in New York City. This is theCUBE's production of Inforum 2016, Infor's user conference, about 14,000 people here, quite a show. Infor does its user conferences every two years. The last time we covered Infor was in uh, 2014 in the awesome city of New Orleans. And uh, so they have this two year cadence and what they do is essentially bring back the customers every couple years, they invest in new innovations and they've been, been begun unveiling those. What we heard two years ago was this shift to the cloud and this notion of uh, no custom modifications in the cloud, going the last mile, uh, focusing on, on industry specificity, uh, bringing in beautiful design. Infor purchased a company uh, several years ago called Hook and Loop, a New York design firm. You're going to hear more about those folks today. And Infor is a collection of companies that's been around for quite some time, a uh, you know, decade plus. Sort of a collection and roll up of, of different companies including the likes of Lawson Software and McCormick and Dodge and other legacy software companies. And what they've done is they've completely reinvented the company, shifting to SaaS, a building on top of, of AWS, bringing in beautiful design, focusing on industry specificity, uh, eliminating custom modifications, a whole new philosophy that Charles Phillips and his team has brought to Infor. I'm here with George Gilbert. Uh, George, you used to cover a lot of these companies back in the day as a securities <laughs> analyst, and it's amazing to see this, this collection of companies coming together, and now we just heard the keynotes this morning. Uh, give us your take on what you heard. Well, at a top level, um, keying off what you were talking about, I, it's extremely rare in the software uh, industry history for a financial buyer to take a bunch of software companies, roll them up, and then modernize and rev renovate them for growth. Generally, a financial buyer takes these software companies and essentially shuts down or, or puts R&D on, on life support and then uh, basically milks the maintenance revenue uh, to pay down the, the debt and make it a, a profitable transaction. But Char Charles um, has totally changed the, the playbook and from when he came in, he started renovating the platform and the most interesting thing is when he was at Oracle, they started renovating their platform for a migration to cloud in about 2003, 2004. And Charles came here at the end of two, of Which uh, cloud wasn't even really a term back right, then, right? Right, But, 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 but it was on demand. And, on yeah. demand. But Charles came here essentially six years later, and usually these second, these uh, middle tier companies have difficulty in matching the majors because they don't have the internal skills for that sort of re-architecture. But what happened is um, the, uh, the capabilities that platform providers like AWS and that software uh, tools makers like Microsoft um, sort of lifted the, the mainstream uh, developer, those at, at Lawson or McCormick and Dodge, so that they could build these, um, these new applications with the same skills that an Oracle had brought to bear starting seven years earlier. In other words, it was a benefit to start seven years later because they could get caught up quicker. So the challenge this company has obviously is moving that legacy install base, moving that customer install base to this, the new modern platform. One of the things they did that I think is, is, is smart and unique from a lot of the other SaaS companies is they've said we don't want to run the plumbing. We're going to run everything on top of AWS and the public cloud. Whereas if you look at some of the popular SaaS companies, clearly Oracle's trying to own the entire stack, uh, you're certainly seeing that with Microsoft. You're seeing that, obviously, with companies like uh, uh, Salesforce and ServiceNow, owning their own data centers. So, you know, it gives them agility. Uh, it gives them greater time to market speed. Maybe not as much margin, uh, but a lot less headaches and the ability to move much more quickly. We're talking, this is about a $3 billion software company. Uh, George, we're, ta we're talking about uh, maybe mid to high 20s in, in, in EBITDA margin. Uh, Non-gap <laughs> changes when you, but uh, with a fair amount of debt, uh, largely funded by Golden Gate Capital. But to your point, 
unique in the sense that normally what private equity will do is they'll you know, suck the company dry. That's not happening here. That was the model of CA, and in fact, some people thought the model of Oracle as they bought all those legacy apps. Yeah, this it turned is, out to not be the case in, 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 with, yeah. with Oracle. They're clearly investing on R&D. Yeah. Uh, but you're seeing investment here. A lot of talk about you know, pre-IPO, but no rush to get to IPO. Uh, Charles is in no rush. You know, clearly the management team is, is patient. There's patient capital. Uh, everybody seems to be making money, and, there's uh, and they're investing. And there's acquisition capital. And there's acquisition capital. GT Nexus, 675 million. And, and Predictix in retail was, yeah. a, was a recent acquisition. So you're seeing a lot of discussion from Charles Phillips. We heard him on, uh, on, the, on Bloomberg a couple weeks ago, talking about big data, talking about analytics. Uh, they announced today in for IoT, uh, making another, a number of other announcements, digital as a service, so Hook and Loop is a company, the New York-based firm that Infor bought several years ago, exclusively for its internal purposes, to make right. its software designs beautiful. Now they're pointing that to external customers, providing digital as a service, as part of this digital transformation. We heard Stefan uh, talk about, the president of Infor talk about the whole digital transformation, Duncan Angove as well, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, pretty refreshing. I mean, a large contingent here, much larger than I think last time, maybe you know, 50% larger than what we saw in New Orleans. And you know, an, another factor that, that really surprised me, um, in addition to the sort of energy level and the growth, le uh, growth amounts that you're talking about in terms of you know, uh, people at the conference, their strategy for moving to the uh, cloud is really kind of clever, which is, the further back in the core of the applications that you go, the more rooted, almost in concrete, they are to where they've originally been deployed. So um, what Chuck, um, Charles, and, and the team are building is taking the first Surface apps and putting them on the cloud. Those are, are least sticky. And then, so those might be um, the, uh, employee management, you know, part of human capital management, your benefits ad admin, or it might be um, the customer omni-channel experience, and then there's uh, CRM, and then there's ERP, and then there's the industry specific stuff, which is hardest to move. In other words, rather than a forklift move of the whole suite, they're doing it in a very clever, prioritized way, which, again, helps them helps them catch up against someone like an SAP, which said, we're going to move all of ERP all at once, you know, starting from the back end, since that's the most mission critical app. And you know, SAP has been doing this in fits and starts now for a decade. So taking it in snackable bites, uh, Info releases uh, pretty significant financial detail for a private company. Uh, presumably that's because it's got some public debt, so it has to divulge certain levels, and it's you know, sort of pre-IPO, uh, but you're talking about a company that's growing you know, close to 10% in overall revenues, its license revenues and its, and its subscription revenues are growing much, much faster in the mid-20s. So as a private company, they can sort of semi, anyway, write their own narrative. A lot of the companies you're seeing struggling to sort of shift to that cloud model. Obviously, Oracle focuses on its you know, great cloud business and it has to shine a light on the growth of cloud because the rest of the business is sort of flat or in decline. Uh, Infor can, like Michael Dell with, uh, with Dell, no 90-day shot clock so it can write its own narrative. Uh, and that narrative, by all accounts, however, seems pretty positive. We're going to unpack that with customers today. We got a number of, 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 of end customers coming on, Infor executives, uh, folks from, from Hook and Loop, and so, this is Cube, we're here live, Silicon Angles flagship production in New York City. We'll be right back after this short break.